Now let's bring in Jennifer Koffendoffer. Jennifer has spent years working as an FBI agent, joins us tonight. Jennifer, great to speak with you. Uh, you know, you've seen so many cases. I know you've worked on so many cases similar to this. How likely is it, do you think, that, that Eliza was a victim of a random crime? Or do you think she may have been targeted because of her family's stature in the community and her significant amount of money? Well, I'm not sure that that's necessarily the reason, but I do, I am concerned with this. And that is uh, Cleotha Abson, who committed this, or at least has been charged with this kidnapping. The person he kidnapped previously was actually worked in the same law firm as the uncle of Eliza Fletcher. And I think this is a very significant clue. And I'm sure, certainly, that the FBI, that the U.S. Marshals, and that the TBI is looking closely at this relationship. And, and it is really an interesting relationship there. And Jennifer, I know that you say you don't believe in coincidences. Based on this new piece of information, everything that we know so far, this, this man, Cleotha, is currently behind bars. He'll appear in court tomorrow for the first time. Um, but we still have no Eliza. Where are authorities at this point in the investigation? Well, they are combing through every bit of information they have. Remember, they also conducted a search warrant at Eliza's home and they took a computer and other items. So they're going to be looking forensically at that information and see if anyone had uh, communication with Liza or if she was communicating with anybody that's giving them pause as to these connections. In addition, they are combing through that dumpster that they took to look for any DNA evidence linking Eliza to that dumpster. They are looking over all the information that they can glean from his apartment and the apartment of his brother and information from his girlfriend. There is so much to pour over now. And I believe that the reason we're seeing this activity of going from di to different locations is because of the lead set forth from this information. All right, so, so Jennifer, let's go back to this suspect here, this man in custody, Cleotha Abson, uh, convicted and served 20 of a 24-year sentence for abduction. You already pointed out the connection between uh, the crime that he was convicted of, this current crime that he is now charged with. Did the system fail Eliza Fletcher here? Anytime someone is let out early, and then go on, goes on to commit another violent crime. Yes, uh, I think society is let down. I think we are all let down by his early release. Well, her family and friends obviously holding out hope. We, we want to see the very best outcome for the Fletcher family. Based on your experience, though, you know, we certainly also have to be realistic. Do you think Eliza is likely to be found alive, uh, alive and unharmed at this point? You know, I always, Nicole, hold out hope. I hold out hope for these victims, um, but we cannot not face some of the evidence, and that is the blood evidence that was washed out of his clothes, uh, purportedly, uh, the evidence in terms of him uh, cleaning the bottom of his vehicle, uh, the fact the dumpster was taken, the fact that no one has seen her, uh, and the violent criminal past of her uh, alleged abductor. When you put all of that in a package, it makes it difficult uh, to believe she is still alive, but we all hold out hope. Oh, absolutely. And if we can stay on this picture, uh, this surveillance picture of Eliza Fletcher jogging there, uh, uh, you know, something that, that we keep hearing about, this was part of her exercise routine. That's when she appears to have been taken there. We're taking a look at that picture now. Um, so. Going on these routine jogs, obviously, you know, everybody has the right to to be healthy, to be to be out jogging. But what are some of the ways that, you know, people who, who are in, in these routines and maybe even if they vary it every few days, how can people try to stay as safe as possible? 
Well, I think the main things are awareness. You have to be completely aware of your surroundings. That means no ear pods. That means uh, not on your cell phone, but truly paying attention to the sounds and what you see around you. Secondarily, you should have pepper spray with you and not just with you, on the ready, unlatched and ready to go in case you are uh, somebody attempts to abduct you. You should also run against traffic, meaning somebody can't drive up behind you uh, with their lights off and abduct you as easily as if you're facing them and you see them bear off and come towards you. Um, the other thing, it's so important to change routes. Maybe you have to jog at 4.30 or 4.20 every morning because that's your schedule, but change up that route. Go on different streets. Don't make it so a predator can look at your routine and then make you a victim. Remember, in this case, he allegedly was seen for approximately 20 minutes as if he was waiting for her. That's another indication to me that this possibly, possibly could have been pre-planned and organized. Yeah, you certainly never know who is watching. And, and of course, we hope that Eliza Fletcher is found safely. Jennifer Koffendoffer, thank you so much for your time tonight. Nicole, thank you. And if you have any information on the disappearance of Eliza Fletcher, you can contact the Memphis Police Department. The number is there on your screen. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.